Five, four, three, two, one. Playing through Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines recently, I discovered an interesting easter egg on one of the TV screens. This menu for a game called Revenant the Ravishing Strains. And while it's pretty obvious what this is meant to be referencing, it actually goes a lot deeper than you might think. There's actually an entire line of tabletop parodies inside the World of Darkness. That just so happens to be developed by a company trying to end the world. This is the World of Shadow game line, and the Black Dog Game Factory. Before we discuss Black Dog Game Factory, we need to discuss its parent corporation, Pentex. For those of you who aren't familiar with the lore of Werewolf the Apocalypse, the meta plot of the series revolves around a group of werewolves known as the Garou trying to fight off the Worm, a spirit of entropy that was slowly driven insane and turned into an apocalypse causing eldritch horror. In the modern nights, the Worm has taken over Pentex, an oil company that has since birthed over half a dozen subsidiaries, all in the name of causing the apocalypse. And while I'm sure you guys would love to learn about corporations like, uh... Knick-Knack Computing... We're here to talk about the most infamous subsidiary of them all, Black Dog Game Factory. Technically speaking, however, Black Dog is a subsidiary of a subsidiary. Pentex's PCP, Politically Corrupt Productions, is a publisher of video games, and Black Dog Game Factory is a daughter company of that daughter company focused specifically on grimdark tabletop RPGs. Oh, I'm sorry, not tabletop RPGs, tailspinning games. Their first and most popular RPG is Revenant the Ravishing, an RPG revolving around, well, Revenants. Not much else is known about the mechanics of Revenant, other than that the eponymous creatures used various powers known as Blights. During the second edition, due to a quote-unquote plot development, the Revenants all became zombies, and the game line's name was changed to Zombie the Putrescence. This was retconned in third edition by Jason O'Kelly, who wanted to evase the quote, second edition bullshit. Seeing as how it is based off World of Darkness's most popular game, Vampire the Masquerade, if you hadn't guessed already, Revenant the Ravishing is the most fleshed out game in the world of Shadow. But it's not the only one. Warlock the Pretension is a parody of my favorite World of Darkness game, and often pokes fun about how complicated the magic system is, and how seriously players tend to take the series. <coughs> they have also published games like Pixie the Delusion, Spectre the Annihilation, and the delightfully mundane Human the Protagonist, which is exactly what you think it is. Interesting to note is that, while this pretty obviously sounds like a Hunter the Reckoning parody, the subsidiary's source book came out in 1995, while Hunter the Reckoning came out in 1999. Black Dog isn't the only fictional game company that exists in the world of darkness. There's also Apex Amusement Association, developers of the Undead Cowboy series, a parody of Pinnacle Entertainment Group and their criminally underrated Deadlands series, Discordium, a parody of Call of Cthulhu developer Chaosium, and Magicians of the Bay, developers of the RPG Labyrinth and Lamia, and the hit trading card game Buy More Sorcery, as well as the obligatory Icosahedron license. I... I wish I was kidding. But what is probably even more hilarious than the games themselves are the individual employees working at Black Dog, which are also parodies of real-life White Wolf employees. First, there is Trevor Chase, the former creative director of Black Dog Game Factory. Chase's pride and joy was Deviant, a game that desired to take a grounded, serious look at the superhero genre until the majority of players took the system and used it as a generic superhero RPG, causing Chase to fall into a depression and, and this is the direct quote, take his own life, getting blood and brains all over his Too Hot Nation of Harlem Ghetto Posse Gangsta Experience t-shirt. A quick little fun fact. The person that Chase is based on, Robert Hatch, 
has actually published a number of RPG books using Trevor Chase as an alias. You can see Trevor Chase credited in books like the first edition of Vampire the Dark Ages and Mummy, second edition. Next, there's Vic Glumsky, the head developer of the Revenant spinoffs Samurai Revenant and Celtic Filth. Unbeknownst to both himself and his employees, Vic is actually a walking corpse, his soul having withered away long ago due to his 120 hour work weeks. He apparently has a thing for one of his co-workers and often fantasizes about chewing her brains out. So romantic. There's also Jeff Henning, the head developer of Warlock the Pretension. He appears to have put all of his points in the arcane background, since no employees ever recall seeing him. Yet, Warlock books still get written and published on a consistent basis. He also might be a vampire, since he's known for seducing LARPers, causing them to disappear for two weeks, only to resurface with no memory of what happened in their absence. And last, but certainly not least, there is Black Dog's most infamous and insidious employee, the Black Spiral Dancer kinfolk, Evan Stump. Stump descended from the Black Spiral Dancer tribe, werewolves who have been corrupted into servants of the worm. Stump actually would have been a werewolf himself, but he was born without a 23rd chromosome, leaving him as a normal mortal. Despite this, he still devoted his life to the service of the worm, working his way up the Pentax hierarchy. When the apocalypse began in the Time of Judgment timeline, all of Black Dog's employees were trapped in the Pentex building for a month at the very least. After 12 days without food, Stump used the body of an employee, who died by choking on a D20, to cook a meal for the other survivors. After 25 days of cannibalism, Stump was the only one left. He died after forgetting to remove a piercing from one of his victims before eating him, and thus his esophagus was pierced. Well. That was morbid way to end it. But what do you expect from a game company that literally wants to cause the end of the world? After reading this, all I can really say is that Modifius Entertainment might have saved us all from a gruesome, gruesome end. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, do not forget that there is a button for that, and please be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Just a reminder that there are a variety of rewards you can earn by becoming a Patreon, including voting on what order I do videos in, adding videos to the schedule, and even joining my Patreon-exclusive Discord server. But of course, none of that is strictly necessary. Liking these videos, commenting on them, and sharing them with your friends are still great ways to support me. As always, my name is Lily, and happy April Fool's Day, everyone.